Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we're talking about liquid cooler lawsuits. This is an update on what we've written about previously on the website. So to bring everyone up to speed, there have been a number of lawsuits involving primarily Asatech, a supplier of CLCs or closed loop liquid coolers, and other companies like Cooler Master, Swift Tech, and Cool IT in particular. So these companies have all been involved in some way or another legally with Asatech and just catching everyone up, what they all do is they all supply liquid coolers. So the Corsair coolers, the NZXT coolers, Silverstone, all of them are supplied by one of these companies or another one like Apaltech. And those use very similar designs for the most part, which Asatech holds a patent over. So the design in question primarily pertains to the presence of the pump located on the cold plate. So your CPU cooler, for a liquid cooler, you have a few items. You have the cold plate at the bottom. That's the piece of copper that connects to the CPU. It has micro fins that go up into a basically mini reservoir where the pump resides. The pump swirls, of course, as pumps do, and propels liquid through those micro fins to dissipate heat. The heated liquid then goes up a tube into the radiator, gets cooled off by fans dissipated by the aluminum fins, fed back down another tube, and then it repeats the process. So that's how it works. And Ace Attack holds a patent specifically over the cold plate mounted CPU or GPU pump design. And that's where things start to get a bit out of control. So in 2013, Swift Tech was issued a CND, a cease and desist by Ace Attack. And that was for the sale of their H220 liquid cooler in US markets. In response to this, Swift Tech ceased sales of their H220 cooler in the US markets, but continued sales in other markets outside of the US. Following this, more recently, there was a Cooler Master lawsuit, and Cooler Master lost that lawsuit in 2014, at which point Ace Tech was awarded $400,000 in damages and a 14.5% royalty on the sale of all relevant liquid coolers, which would include the Sidon series, the Glacier series, the Neptune series, and similar liquid coolers. Following this, there was a Cool IT settlement, so it did not go all the way through the channel like the Cooler Master one did. Cool IT reached a settlement with Asatech where they awarded Asatech some amount of cash for the cessation of their lawsuit. And these lawsuits were both for the same reason. They were both because Asatech was accusing Cooler Master and Cool IT of patent infringement on their design that we've gone over already. And interestingly, Cooler Master demanded a judgment on their ruling from 2014, which was ruled on by a jury. And that was denied just recently, as in yesterday or two days ago at this point. And that was followed up by a hit to Cooler Master to the tune of a royalties increase to 25% or a bit over that 25 and some change for the continued sale of Cooler Master liquid coolers through the current date. So basically bringing everyone up to speed on the relevant part, Cooler Master lost a lawsuit in 2014 and awarded Ace Attack damages for the infringement of their patent on liquid cooling and then demanded judgment was not awarded that and has been hit with an additional penalty for their continued sale of coolers. At this point, Cooler Master now owes 25% royalties on coolers sold from January 1st this year onward, and they also are no longer allowed to sell their liquid coolers in US markets. So that's where things get a bit interesting, and that's because of the recent AMD R9 Fury X, which uses a Cooler Master liquid cooler. This Cooler Master liquid cooler in the R9 Fury X is also a cold plate mounted pump and if you tear it all down it's pretty similar to a Sidon 120 liquid cooler other than the fact that it's square instead of a circle for the most part. So that's where we're yet unsure if the lawsuit will impact the sale and production of AMD R9 Fury X video cards but it is certainly a possibility there is no reason to be alarmist about it yet it's not all going down in flames or anything like that but it is a possibility for which we should all be at least paying attention, if, if nothing else. So that's where things stand with liquid coolers. If you're curious about how this impacts the greater liquid cooling market, 
Companies like Apaltec have not yet been roped into these legal battles, and that company in particular supplies the Silverstone Tundra, the Enermax, Lickmax cooler, which I actually have sitting right here, and some Lipa coolers, and then there are other companies, of course, who also do the cold plate mounted pump design, which could be called into question. So that's sort of how things are working right now. Whether or not this patent is is something that is uh, good for the industry is not something we're discussing in the video here today. You are certainly free to debate that in the comments below, but I will not be commenting on that at this time because I, I really need to inform myself a lot more from all the parties involved before I can comment on that in a manner that I determine uh, adequate for discussion. But in terms of things that are interesting, current, and up for discussion, on my end, the AMD R9 Fury X deserves some attention right now because the potential impact of the lawsuit, Cooler Master is getting hit with additional fines and already owes a lot of money. The sale of their Sidon and similar CPU coolers will cease, so if you want one, you should get one soon if you're in the US. And then finally, and interestingly, Asetech has expanded their patent acquisition. They now hold patents in European and China markets as well. Previously, it was just the US. So the inclusion of these markets could impact companies like Swift Tech, who have gotten away with selling their H220 in other regions outside of the US and may now have to reconsider that given the new patents acquired by Asetech. So that's all for this content. If you like this type of reporting, as always, check out that Patreon link in the post roll video and leave comments below, let us know what you think. We've got some other cool videos coming up very soon, so subscribe to the channel if you're not already, including some cooling stuff relevant to this, but uh, not talking about the potentially boring industry legal side of things, more talking about the performance. So that's all for this time, I'll see you all next time.